My name is Steve Stevens, the best sports consultant money can buy. I make more money betting sports than anybody in the world. I'm the one that tells you who to bet. I'm not a bookie. I'm the bookie killer. If money talks, then I got a lot to say. I'm on the grind trying to make a hundred thousand dollars a day. The game that I pick, believe me, it's a winner. What I know could get you rich, cause all I pick is winners. Welcome to Lost Bay. Money talks, money talks. Welcome to Lost Bay. Oh, man. What's up, everybody? Hey, first of all, dude, this little fucking dick in my fucking face, Mike, you, can we get some new mics here pretty soon, guys? Like, we went from the headphones and this back to the old Bob Barker. Uh, we'll get ready for the showcase showdown coming up next, huh? Maybe, maybe it's a joke we're playing on you. I guess so, man. Well, anyway, you know, I ain't Mozzie. I, I ain't used to dicks in my face. You no, know what we, I'm know, we know that. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned into the VIP Sports Podcast. I'm Steve Stevens, a.k.a. the Bookie Killer, sitting here with the paparazzi. Looking a little better today, bud. Uh, feeling a little bit better. I uh, had the fifth surgery due to this arm and elbow uh, last Tuesday. Coming along, coming along. Man, this motherfucker looked like a dog in one of the Sarah McLaughlin videos. Well, you know what I mean? With the sad, this dude looked more beat up than anything I haven't seen. Yeah, all, all from a little dog walking incident. You could not believe what I've gone through. Well, I'm glad you're back, man. We got a great show for you guys today. As you know, April 11th, podcast number 404. It's kind of amazing. No doubt about it. Anyway, today's podcast sponsored by the Money Team. You guys want to get a hold of us? 877 220 6540. Go to the website, VIPSportsLasVegas.com. Put your number in for a free pick. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, VIP Sports, uh, LV. What's our TikTok? What is a TikTok? Also, we just started TikTok, Steve Stevens Official. Make sure you follow us at as well. Well, that's if Joe Biden doesn't get you shut down. But yeah, no doubt about it. Anyway, uh, you want to talk about some breaking news this morning. OJ Simpson dies of cancer. He does. Uh, it was quick. He put out a video on Super Bowl Sunday uh, saying, you know, he was dealing with some issues, but he thought he'd be back on the golf course a couple of weeks later. But uh, he didn't get that uh, dream. No, he didn't. But I tell you what, OJ couldn't have picked a better place than Vegas to leave from California. That is guys, right. you know, you guys probably think that people were scared of OJ over here. Uh, OJ was a superstar over here, hung out at Grape Street all the time, uh, all the Summerlin spots. Nine out of ten uh, of you guys out there that are 50 or over that live in Summerlin, good chance OJ might have fucked your bitch. There's very good chance of that. <laughs> they said the older women loved OJ, boy. He'd sit in the Grape Street drinking, no underwear on with his 12-inch cock hanging. You got a housewife on three glasses of wine? Better oh, be careful. That's easy to pull. That, that's happening all day long. But So, yeah, OJ had it his way out here in Las Vegas. And uh, in Summerlin, the women loved him. He did. I mean, you had never thought with uh, OJ's past that – He'd go and be a celebrity that people would want to come up to him, take pictures, hang out with him. But like you said, out here in Las Vegas, he was an absolute celebrity. All he did was golf and fuck. Pretty I mean, good life. Can you blame him? No. I mean, so, yeah, but he did die of cancer, whatever. And uh, to say he had a, a crazy full life is to say the least. So, Well, as a paparazzi, when he was going through his trial out here for the uh, sports memorabilia, the kidnapping shit, uh, I worked on him every single day. And I, I can tell you, he was one of the nicest celebrities that I ever did work on. Said hello to me every day. Gave me sound bites for video. Was just a was just a class act from my experience. Every time I seen him, uh, uh, now keep in mind, you know, people out there, you know, mad about the murder and this, that, and the other. If it was yeah. my family, I'd be devastated too. That ain't what we're talking about. We're no. talking about the retirement part in Vegas. I'd see him all the time. Nicest guy in the world. You know he's nice to me. He's trying to fuck my girl. Yeah. Hey, what's up, bud? Can I join you guys? Yeah, now we're cool, OJ. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, RIP, uh, OJ. I'm sure uh, a lot of people are sad and some aren't. Yeah. Did he, did he ever inquire about uh, getting some games from Steve Stevens? No, nah, I never even talked to OJ like that. I was trying to get in and out. You know what I mean? No. Uh -uh. OJ's looking to talk to a bitch, like I said. Yeah. Anyway, want to give a big, very shout out. Thank you so much to the to veterans, retired and active military. It's because of you guys fighting for our country allows us to do whatever we want to do. So 
any active or retired military, DM me. We always have a free pick. I want to give a shout-out to Steve Stevens. Uh, the college basketball season ended on Monday night. Uh, congratulations to Connecticut. They're repeat champions. But congratulations to you and the crew because you had another record-breaking season here. Not only that, but I was just going to say, uh, UConn isn't the only ones that broke records with covering the game every time during the, the post-NCAA tournament. We did, too. We yes. had them every motherfucking game. Yeah, it was a huge, huge, huge season uh, for VIP Sports with uh, winning these games. 12-1 and one against the spread in their final 13 games. Yeah. Where, have you ever seen another team do that? What, not And to be favored like that? Even, listen to me, even the guys that bet favorites were scared to bet the favorite because of how many points it was. Yeah. Covered 12 out of 13 times. UConn, I love you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And my crew thanks you a lot as well. Yeah, Danny Hurley, <laughs> congratulations. Great coach. Uh, Going to be one of the best coaches uh, ever when he retires, I think. Uh-huh. What's next? What's next for, for Connecticut and Danny Hurley? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think a few guys are going to go pro. Got to go to that transfer portal and restock. But the way he coaches that offense, the movement both offensively and defensively, uh, they're going to be around to stay for a long the time. The sophomore white boy uh, center, he's entering the draft for sure, Ethan said. For sure, yeah. He's so they're be, losing some players. They're going to lose some players, but uh, it was interesting to find out that since 1999, they have won six national championships. Six well, national hey, championships, 25 years. Congratulations to you guys. However, our listeners, that's not going to make them any money. No, Bobby. we got to make them money today. So anyway, uh, you want to read this little story? Uh well, about college basketball? No, the the five month FBI were searching farms, digging, and all that shit. Oh, I mean, okay. Well, yeah, it is a question for you. Uh, for the second time in a five month span, the FBI were uh, seen searching for uh, seen searching farms in New York, digging for possible buried bodies as part of an ongoing investigation into the Gambino crime family. Question here for you, Steve: Was Las Vegas better when the mob ran things back in the day? I mean, for the locals and everybody, absolutely. And your, mean, your dad was part, uh, he was in with the Binions, right? Yeah, my dad was in there back in the day doing his thing. My grandpa even more. So, yeah, no, I'm third, I'm fourth generation uh, born and raised in Las Vegas. Yeah, it was legit back then. A lot more respect. You go gamble, they look out for you, cater to you. You can go lose fucking $100,000 uh, in one of these casinos now before you even get a fucking drink. Right. So yeah, they don't they don't have too much respect and all that shit. But uh, if, if you could, if you could, you don't see all the them. barrels popping up in Lake Mead. You don't see all the bodies that are coming out out here yeah, now. Yeah. Well, as soon as that lake got low enough, boy, those barrels were popping up left and right, huh? They sure did. Unbelievable. But uh, what else? Well, do you have any uh, old Italian mafia stories about Las Vegas from back in the day? Yeah, there's a bunch, but that's not going to make anybody no money. You no. know what I mean? So what's the other question, Pop? Well, the other question is there is a lot of talk about artificial intelligence these days. Uh, what effect could AI have on sports betting, and is it already having an effect? And will AI ever be able to pick winners like Steve Stevens? Well, I'll tell you right now, it's affected us. What about those four guys that called us? I have people that are doing AI, sending out automated pitches, saying they're me. Yeah, I've, I've, it, I've heard that, actually. It, it's the fourth fucking time that it's happened. I got a call as me, Steve Stevens. It, and it's crazy because it, the excitement isn't there, but it's your voice exactly. Boom, boom, boom. So the average person would, would believe it. So it's going to affect a lot of people and a lot of things. Will they ever be able to pick perfect winners? No. They'll be able to get their algorithms and their stats and everything a computer can possibly come up with AI-wise, but uh, that has nothing to do with injuries and people that are playing and today information. Right. I mean, it's not going to be able to predict the guys. Stats only take you so far, as you know, Poppy. We've been telling you guys for years, you're only getting so much off your stats. Well, like then you got to get in with the team, see how they're playing, who's playing, who's pitching, what you know, what's going on? Man? Well, today, like, not yesterday. The info you get, like on their traveling, who's sick, who's it's what not, we pay for. They're not, they're not going to have that. They, you kind don't. Of these guys don't need to pay somebody that's giving them stats they can get on their own. Right. You know what I'm saying? So umpire matchup in baseball. We're going to get to that as well. Well, here's well, here's a question from a fan, a subscriber to the podcast asks, uh, "Hey Steve, what's the best advice you've ever gotten in regards to how to build a business?" Best information I got how to build business. It, Probably just to focus on one business and give it everything you got. A lot of entrepreneurs and guys have five irons and five different fires, and none of them add up to fucking nothing. So, you know, my advice is if you're going to open up any business, go full blast, focus on that, that only. Don't take no for an answer. Do whatever it takes to get the fucking job done. Don't, take, don't let no one tell you you can't do it. And just keep going. 100%. What else you got for me? Well, women's basketball, Caitlin Clark in Iowa, fell to South Carolina in the championship game. The women's final had 18.7 million viewers, and the uh, if 
I could turn the page, right? This fucking guy here. Way to ruin a podcast, Bobby. Yeah, and the men's crazy. final had 14.8 million viewers. Did you tune into uh, the Caitlin Clark final game or didn't give a shit? Well, thank God I kind of know what you were trying to say because yeah. I didn't understand nothing. The guys didn't either. So you're wondering if Caitlin Clark, uh, what about it? I mean, well, I told the, you, watching her is very, very exciting. Now, the sister on the other side gave her the fucking business. They fucking banged him. And there's just as good as players in that league, if not better, than Caitlin. But, dude, just watching her with her Steph Curry light game, it's very exciting. And I see why a bunch of men watched it. I, I watched her play myself. Are you surprised that the women's game got more viewers than the men's final? Uh, with her and, and what she's doing, yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. And all it's doing is giving them women clout. They should be making more money than they're making. They're professional athletes. They went to high school, college, worked their way to pro. It should mean for something. Just like the military. You're in the military for over four years. You should make a quarter million dollars a year with full benefits and never pay for fucking nothing. Totally agree. Instead of going there, getting post-traumatic stress, getting fucked up, your wife left, you're fucked, your house is fucking repo. Uh, they send you to the VA that doesn't do a motherfucking thing for you. Before you know it, you're out on the street. It's a bad situation, that's for sure. Similar to that, Poppy. Went a little deep, but you know what I mean? So, anyway, uh, star veteran Diana Taurasi said, young college stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are going to be in for a reality check once they get into the WNBA. What did I say last week? Same as Didn't that. Didn't I? Or a couple weeks ago. Caitlin, you go take that money in the big five. You know, you go. The big three. The big three. No, I'm sticking the five million. Fucked getting the five million. There's other teams out there that'll probably give you ten to play for the ten. Yeah. Well, and on top of all the endorsements she's gonna get right now, she should be lining them up. You sign every motherfucking endorsement you could possibly fucking get your hands on. Plain and fucking simple. The question is, do I agree with her, or should older WNBA players embrace the fact that Caitlin Clark can change women's professional basketball forever? Um, I agree with her to a certain extent. Now, this girl has changed basketball forever because, Tarasi, I never watched you. Uh, I know that you were out there doing your thing, balling and all that, never watched one of your games, never cared. This girl got me watching every one of the games in the finals. So there is a major difference from what you and what you're talking about. And here, now, I do agree on Diana because she is going to be a, in a reality check if she thinks she's going to go just to the WNBA and get rich. Right. Okay, because people will watch her for a little bit. She gets on a losing team. She ain't doing what she did in fucking college or whatever. She'll fade away quick. She becomes a superstar. She's on a team that wins, and she's doing her thing, and she's killing these other WNBA girls. It could be a phenomenon, man. I, I, I got her back. I got the WNBA's back. I, I hope they succeed big as they possibly can. I personally think uh, Caitlin's going to have a rude uh, awakening if she thinks she's just going to come in and dominate. She's going to be a star player, but 100%. it's going to take a little bit of time. And these girls are physical in the WNBA. And, and a gonna, lot longer uh, and a lot stronger, taller, thicker, the whole nine yards. Yeah. But, she's, but when you're a shooter like her, it won't matter. It'll affect another part of her game, but she's always going to get those shots off, cross your ass over, don't matter who you are. Yeah. And, and she's going to get her shots off. And the girls in the WNBA need to give her a little leadway because – if she can build no, she just needs to listen to what we me and everyone else is telling her and so many words with Diana go get as much money as you possibly fucking can yeah. keep performing and keep trying to change WNBA and blow it up but in the meantime feed your family yes she can make 25 to 30 million dollars first year in the next year yep no problem with 100 million in contracts yep not from the WNBA though no, no way. <laughs> What's the NBA news? Well, our good old friend Charles Barkley must have been listening to the VIP Sports Podcast because Barkley now says that the Democrats have made many, many mistakes. We need law and order, and he disagrees with Democrats giving free money to all these different people, but not giving money to help homelessness and crime. You agree yeah. with that? Do I don't agree with any fucking thing he says. He's senile as fuck. You don't know what he's fucking talking about, and it, it is what it is. I don't dislike him. I like him, but worst gambler in the world. You don't take any advice from fucking Charles. I agree. You know what I mean? Is he? Do I like him? Is he funny to watch and all that? Yeah, I wouldn't mind playing golf with him. Charles, get, he'll, he'll put up some money and bet with you. I, I agree with him, though, on that fact that we need to be helping our homelessness and crime uh, and maybe not be giving money to people who don't deserve it. I do agree with that part. 100 percent. But, I mean, it's been the same way since the beginning of times. Yes. Politicians, get in there and do something about it. Major League Baseball, the former interpreter for the Los Angeles Dodgers superstar Otani is now facing federal charges related to his alleged theft 
of millions from the slugger. This is such bullshit. I know. The New York Times was first to report that he is in negotiation to a plea guilty and that an investigation is racing toward a conclusion. First of all, he's taking one for the team. And by the way, you are a straight OG, straight up. (laughs) You got caught. Not only are you willing to say it was you, because let me ask you a question. When he was placing all these bets, sitting side by side with Otani as his interpreter, He's placing these bets. He's taking money out of Otani's count. Well, I mean, what was he doing during this time? Watching the new Godzilla? I don't think so. They were uh, best, well, well, huh? You they don't think he best knows? Best friends. They're best friends. Right. They know that they're caught red-handed. Yeah. This interpreter's going to the point where he's taking a case yep. for Otani. You know why? So they can end this quickly and no one hears about it ever again. Have you ever seen a case happen this quickly within a week or two? Bing, bang, bang, done. You know how many? You know how much money we're talking about right here with Otani and how, uh, how powerful the fucking Dodgers are. Yeah. We're talking about L.A., homie. Right. So Billions. yeah, they're Billions. paying their way out of this. He's gonna plea out to some probation or something or whatever he gets, house arrest or whatever, and it's gonna be over. No one's gonna hear about it ever again. But Otani, you lied about your injury. You're a horrible fucking gambler, and uh, I love you. I love it. You just got <laughs> caught. But Pete Rose can never be in the Hall of Fame for doing the same shit. True. You tell me. Major League Baseball, Otani gifted fellow Dodger teammate, Joe Kelly's wife, a brand new fully loaded Porsche. He said he bought it for her because she went big on social media and helped recruit Otani to the Dodgers. Question, would you let another man buy your wife a new car? Absolutely. fucking lutely Yeah. Any dude out there looking to get Kelly, you know, that new uh, Rose truck, she'll take it no problem. So all Kelly has to do is go on social media tonight and just start – Banging out for Otani. And I the- guess. I guess so. Shit, you can get a car. How, 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 how do you know that Otani didn't bang her out and bought a report? That's true. You another know what co- I mean? Another cover-up. Yeah, that could be another lie. You never know, yeah. Otani. <laughs> All of a sudden, he bought her motherfucking Porsche truck. Sounds to me like he nutted on her. You yep, know what I mean? Now Joe Kelly's get, wife's getting a free, uh, free yeah, truck. Man, yeah, man, because this girl, listen, you don't think his interpreter told him? This girl's all on your dick, bro. She's on social media trying to get you to the Dodgers yep. bad. This dude Kelly's wife wants to fuck you bad. So Went yeah. out there. Got the best head he's ever got in his life. You know what? She's probably the reason why he went to L.A. Yep. Fucked yep. his brains out, and he bought her a Porsche. The interpreter Thanks, again. The interpreter in the middle of it again. I ain't mad at you at all. Otani, I'm liking you more and more every day. <laughs> Major League Baseball. There's been a lot of pitching injuries in Major League. Head of the Baseball Players Association thinks a shorter pitch clock has contributed to too many of those injuries. Well, of course it is. You're, you're making them rush on a time. They're not, definitely not going to be as patient and throw the good as pitches they could. Well, the league's then in kind of a conundrum because the baseball ratings went way up. A lot of people are very, very happy that the game sped up. But now you've got the Players Association saying guys are getting injured. What is baseball going to do? Uh, they don't do nothing. They just keep doing what they're doing. I mean, are they dying or are they just getting injured? Just getting injured. I just call it as uh, art of war, part of the game. You know what I mean? No super crazy hot stats in MLB, guys, to start off the season. Here are the best win-loss records. Yankee, 10-3. and three. Cleveland, 9-3. and three. Pittsburgh, 9-3 and three and 6-1 and one on the run line on the road. Keep that in mind. Milwaukee, 8-3, and 5-1 and one on the run line on the road. Atlanta, 7-3. and three. Dodgers, 10-5. and five. That's about right. The Dodgers are going to win two out of every three games. They're on pace for that. Atlanta, good start. Any surprising things here? Maybe Pittsburgh uh, with the 9-3 and three start? You surprised by any of these? I love – I mean, anytime you get a 6-1 and one and a 5-1 and one on the road, on the run line, I mean, you can't ask for anything else. No. Because they're already getting shorter odds than they can get, so that's plus money, underdog value. All which, day long. Which we've been trying to explain Jesus, to Jesus, like, do you know if you had 6-1 and one on Pitt, 5-1, and one, like, out of those, what, 13 games, probably 11 of them were underdogs. Yes, plus you money know? for sure. Yeah. Teams off the slowest start. These are the teams that have had the slowest start, guys. White Sox, 2-10. and 10. They're killing it, huh? Oh, I'm Holy shit. But they are 4-1 and one at home on the run line. Miami, 2-11. and 11. Colorado, 3-10. and 10. Mets, 4-6. and six and 0-6 oh and on the run line at home. Oof. However, I was just telling Ethan before the show, these fuckers have scored like 30 runs in their last eight games. Yeah, they put up a lot so of So they're runs. scoring runs. Unfortunately, they're playing the Braves, who match them, but, uh, you know, they looks like they're going to lose today. Yeah, they're down. I know that. All right, this is run line, guys. Best team to fade on the run line is Miami. They are 3-10 and 10 on the run line. Now, let me ask you a question. It's early in the season. They've only played 13 games so far. 
They've proven that they're not very good right now in the run line. Is this a team that you keep fading on the run line, or do you 100%. say percent now you, baseball you don't change it up? Now nah, trends in baseball can go on forever, and even when you lose, you keep going. You'd have to lose two two in a row to to, to slow down on the trend. So this isn't a team that's going to turn it around miraculously. You keep going against them and cash those tickets. One thousand fucking percent. Here's a team with a great underdog value: the Kansas City Royals. They've won six straight games. Yeah, they face Houston tonight. They uh, are a Which they uh, can handle dog. Houston, too. Yeah, they're a small dog at home with one of their better pitchers on the mound. Here's a podcast question. On the Joe Rogan experience, Joe said that Floyd Mayweather is without a doubt the best boxer of all time. He also said that when things get heated on the street, he strong, strongly recommends people walk away from any and every physical fight before it starts. He said fighting could kill someone, get yourself killed, or it could get you put in jail for life. The question, with everything going on in the world, how important is that advice, and have you ever been in or seen any really crazy fights? Well, that's a dumbass fucking question. I've seen fucking murders. Yeah. I've seen the craziest fights and shit breaking out that you could ever imagine, just like Joe Rogan has. I agree with Joe Rogan a million percent. We need love, not violence, dude. Somebody gets you hyped up, be the bigger man and walk away. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to kill you because doing things spontaneously, the shit I did when I was younger, I'd still be locked up for, man. It takes you living life and getting older not to react on those situations. Like, if I would have just listened to all the shit my dad told me, it all was true. I just had to learn for myself. I'm a hardhead. Well, my my thoughts on this are, uh, with age comes wisdom. I think we both both have learned that. But you think you're gonna? And but we never listen. That that's what that's that, like Joe Rogan. This is what we need to figure out. When you're 23, what can we say or get through to a 23 year old where they listen, so we don't have to go through it on our own and be hard headed? Because as a 50 year old, I I completely understand what Joe says, and I actually implement it. There's been situations where I've been out. Right, you could have you could have got down and done things, but could have cost you big time. Right, and it's even like hurt your self confidence walking away, whatever. But when you really think about it, it's not, man. It's not worth it. You just walk away and move and do your thing. But that's hard to to say to a youngster. That was going to be my other point. Today's generation, and I really mean today's generation, these kids don't give a fuck. They don't use their mind. They don't think ahead. They just act and react. And it's a major, major problem in this world today. Nine out of the ten shooters that are acting are, aren't real killers. There's people that are scared and, and, and shoot. Right. And, it, and it's just terrible. So, yes, we need love. We, we don't need any craziness or any fights, any confrontation. It's always best to just walk away. Yeah. What about golf? Tiger, I can't wait for this. Go well, ahead. This Tiger made Woods, me who, laugh. Who we've had a couple of wagers on lately. But Tiger Woods. You've lost has, every one. <laughs> has played just 24 holes of golf in PGA Tour events this season. But he believes he can win one more green jacket if everything comes together this week at the Masters at Augusta. And R. Kelly believes he can fly. Yeah, exactly. If he could, he wouldn't be locked up right now. I tell you that right now. No. And P. Diddy will be at the Masters go ahead, showing up. Go, this go ahead and finish because I got yeah. something to say about yeah. this. Tiger and Phil are both <laughs> plus 15, 16,000. Uh, to one odds. Question, do you think Tiger Woods has a legitimate shot at winning the Masters this week? Not no, but fuck no. Tiger, I love you. I've won bets with paparazzi. I knew you were coming back. Uh, I always supported you when you came back. I I always bet you as the underdog, but (laughs) homie, this is what I do for a living. You've let me down too many times. The answer is Tiger doesn't have a fucking shot in a million years of winning this tournament. No fucking way. These young studs out there will beat the brakes off him. Well, period. Vegas, it's over. Can Michael Jordan come back and be the best player in basketball? No. Not a fucking chance. No. Vegas, Vegas and says let me say one be more. buried if Tiger won this weekend. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, the, the books, the sports books, the casinos probably shut down. Yeah. Ain't happening, though. Sorry, not happening. Uh, and I think Phil will uh, finish better than Tiger. Me too. Here's another question. If you had to pick one, would you rather play a round of golf in Augusta National Golf Club? Uh, would I rather play a game of baseball at the Field of Dreams Park in Iowa? Uh, Field of Dreams. Really? Yes, Field of Dreams. Yeah, I'll probably go play the golf. You play the golf? Yeah, just for the – I mean, dude, the those courses are golf? so nice and so dope. But uh, I really don't care about golf. I told you. I play five, six holes. I'm good at golf. After that, I'm looking to smoke a joint. I'm drinking some alcohol and – not even playing anymore. In the cart doing fucking wheelies? Uh, on the no, course. I ain't doing all that. No, that's it's the atmosphere of being out there. It's mental, dude. It makes you feel good. That's, I've done a lot of deals on the golf course as well.
NBA Dallas Mavericks behind paparazzi's boy Kyrie Irving, his favorite player, and Luka have rattled off 13 wins in their last 14 games. Here's the question, Poppy. Do you still hate Kyrie? I will be honest. This year, he's behaved himself. He's shut up. He's played. And look, Dallas is playing great basketball. They're a team to fear in the West. So, no, I don't hate Kyrie. Uh, I just don't Ooh, like it. sounds like Kyrie team. proved himself and shut you up. Yeah, Kyrie shut himself up. He must be watching up. the podcast too, huh? No, no, no. He, he shut himself up and look at the success that he's had. I think Luke is a big part of that. Uh, shout out to Kyrie on having a great season. No doubt about it. Uh, Dallas, of course, is on fire like uh, my plays. Dallas is in fifth place in the West and rising. Can they win it all? No, they can't win it all. There's better teams, but they can make a deep run. Uh, can two guards go and dominate uh, against some of these teams that have bigger guys and are more physical? I don't believe so, not in today's game, but they can make a run. They can make a run. You said that. Well, give me three other teams better. That'll uh, in, beat them no problem. In the West? Any period. Denver? Uh, I think this year's Minnesota team is going to go deep. And uh, I like the Phoenix Suns to make a run with Durant, <laughs> Beal, and Booker. So thank God you ain't picking the games and handicapping in this hey. motherfucker, guys. Like I said, not a fucking chance, All dude. Right. Now, here's some more NBA. Bronny James has declared for the NBA draft or he, uh, or he might stay in high school. Do you think Bronny could eventually be a good pro? No, I don't. He he declared for the draft. It's an absolute joke. He averaged 4.6 points per game in his uh, freshman season at USC. Granted, he had uh, that heart problem and everything. I don't wish anything bad on Bronny James. The expectation level that he's going to have to live up to is never going to be matched. Well, here, uh, here's a no. question for our viewers out there, okay? Uh, whose son do you think will play better uh, in the NBA? Uh, well, give, me, give me two players that have kids. I want to compare it to, like, LeBron's son or somebody else. Well, Tim, Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, from Tim Hardaway. Uh, trying to think who else. Anthony Davis. Uh, his father was in the NBA. Uh, who? Jalen Brunson. Yeah. His father was there. Yeah, uh, so, so there's some guys who definitely are all-star players. But I'm, I'm just thinking, because, you know, like even Michael Jordan's son, he went and played for that small college or whatever. Uh, at Central Florida. Central Florida. Uh-huh. Did absolutely nothing. You right. know what I mean? You would think. I mean, but it just goes to prove Mike's story. They weren't born with natural talent. Right. Mike you, he made himself that way with hard work and dedication and practice. That's what you got to love about him. That's why you got to love Kobe because Kobe had natural talent and fucking took Mike's work ethic and fucking molded into something no one's ever seen. Right. So, you know, LeBron, you would think his stock, he has natural talent. His body, and his, he's, they've just got natural genes. You would think his son would come out out of control. It's crazy because just three years ago, they were supposed to be the biggest thing coming to the NBA. Are you just saying it's too early, or you don't think he's good at all? I don't think he's good at all, not, not for I, the NBA. I think the younger son uh, is going to be better than Bronny, but I don't think either of them— The could, younger son is, for sure. I, I don't think either of them could possibly live up to the expectations that are going to be put on them. It's unfair to put that on them. Yeah, that's true. But uh, Bronny, just in my opinion, didn't show shit in college. He'd have to show a lot more to be able to go and play against these guys in the NBA. He's not at that level. He's going he, to be all right either way, I think, Pop. We'll see. Whether he makes it or not, he's going to be fine. If you, had, if you had to pick one team to represent the West in the finals, who would it be? Well, you already said Minnesota, Denver, and uh, – I said Phoenix. Uh, I'm surprised they're not on that list. But on the list also here is OKC, the Clippers, and Dallas. OKC has a legit shot. They're a very young team, though, and an experienced team – Having to go up against experienced teams does not bode well. Very rare can you find an NBA team that just flashes from nowhere, never making the playoffs into the NBA Finals. If you had to pick one, Minnesota, Denver, OKC, Clippers, Dallas, who are you going with? Denver. I'm, I'm going with you. Do the Lakers have a shot in the West? They lost two straight, but before that, they won nine out of ten. Well, the way that Golden State just beat them fucking down, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, better watch out for Golden State. If, if the Lakers can get back uh, Wilt Chamberlain, uh, Magic Johnson, uh, Kareem, <laughs> yeah, they I have a you. shot. If they can't get those three back, no, they have no shot. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they surprised me last year when they went on their run. They did. They 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 were the surprise team to make it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, this team, I just don't see it. At, at times, they play good basketball, but they're inconsistent, and I just don't see it. Let's get into the NHL, guys. Don't forget about my first period hockey totals. Florida Panthers, 5-0 first period over in their last five games. New Jersey Devils, 5-0 first period 
over the last five games. That's 10 winners. I ain't giving them nothing. No, the playoffs are starting. The I think fact that you guys, if you're sports bettors out there and you're not betting first period hockey totals, you're missing out on so much money, it's fucking insane. I think you were putting together a uh, playoff first total uh, package coming up here because the playoffs start real shortly. Uh, 100%. Colorado, LA Kings, Columbus, Winnipeg, and the Rangers, all 4-1 and one to the over in the first period in their last five games. Okay, so That's you, 30 units, Poppy. If you're a sports better watching this show, you don't need anything else but to call this guy for his first period NHL totals if you want to make money. 30 units over the last two weeks. Plain and fucking simple. You guys haven't made 30 units your entire life. So bottom line, guys, right now is by far the best time of the year to make money. And more importantly, guys, you guys out there that are, you know, not where you're supposed to be right now, uh, you know, something's going on in your life or whatever, man, you always got to, when you look at a, at a rose bush, you could choose to see the thorns or the beautiful roses. You always got to stay positive. Look at the roses. Let yourself know everything's going to be fine and keep grinding, keep pushing. Life is too short, man. Tragedies happen all the time. Fuck, you might not be here tomorrow. Love your family like it's the last time you're going to see them. Live your life with excitement and be happy, man. Because being miserable, all you're doing is hurting yourself and bringing others down around you. They're like ankle weights. You got to get those guys away from you. Surround yourself by motivated people and good things will come your way. Even gambling, when you're on a losing streak, if you go in there and you're in a bad mood and, and not happy and everything like that and positive, you're not going to do well. If you, you got to keep your composure. Attitude, you're going you're gonna to do well, and especially if they call you. Well that's, well, that's the whole reason why we work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We lose fucking games, plain and of fucking course. simple. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, guys, we want to make sure everybody gets paid. whole reason why we do this podcast is to help you out. We have packages for all size shapes of sports bettors. You guys want to make a second income. You want the finer things in life. You know, you do your day job, we make the second income. See, the thing people are missing you have to treat this as a business. Yes. There's a big difference between a degenerate gambler and someone that treats it as a business. You know, you can't be happy when you're winning, going to the park with your son. When you lose, you don't want to go nowhere. You look at the numbers, and as long as you win more than you lose, it's all that matters. It takes the emotional struggle and degeneracy out of the entire business. Right. And that's what I'm here to teach you guys. Anyway, my son had a blowout win in his baseball game last night. Congratulations, my voice Dominic. is gone, as you guys can tell. But like I said, we love you. DM now to join the family. And remember one thing. Don't let the players be the only ones that get paid. I'll see you in the winter, sir. It's Steve Stevens. I bust your bookie head open. Split it to the white meat. I ain't joking. Me a dirt bomb in the ghost float. Straight OG like that Kush I be smoking. It's way too potent for rookies to come hit it. A little white girl around, I might sniff it. Popping bub in the club, so twisted. My pops keeps telling me to go get it. So I'm at the sports book, betting big on the Clippers. I'm talking about five figures. I need a few shots of liquor. Might need another zipper if the bomb play me. Fuck around and put a half a meal on Tom Brady. When it comes to betting sports, Steve Steve is a beast. Need a certified winning call, VIP sports. I got too many felonies to ride around with my Glock. So sure to keep it since I got shot in Vegas like pirate. Yeah, right.